Welcome to the tour of my sewing room. Just up these little stairs here. Some bathroom here on the right. And here we are. We'll start behind the door. This is where we keep all the thread. Those shelves were on the wall when I moved in and I thought that's a great spot for thread here behind the door. All sorted by color. Look how organized I am. Over here we've got denim thread, so that's the real thick stuff. Collection of woolly nylon underneath that. I don't use that very often, but I have it just in case. First machine is a Kenmore. I picked this up at a thrift shop for $2.97. Keep the buttonhole attachment on there pretty much all the time. It's nice to be able to whip out a buttonhole without changing stuff around. Especially for three bucks, can't go wrong with that, right? This is a Neki Supernova. It's one of my newest machines. It's a nice, nice quality Italian made machine. Let's see, got some bobbins and bobbins and bobbins and lots of bobbins. There's another Supernova. This one's a little bit older. There's a six spool, six cone holder there that I built out of a couple dowels and a 2x4. That works great. I find these big spools sometimes. These are huge and they just don't fit on top of a regular serger holder like this. So that works great. This is a Kenmore serger. I got this off of eBay. I actually got this one, that Neki, and that Neki. All these machines came on off of eBay. I didn't pay more than $100 for any of them. I like to keep them on this. You see they're on this, uh, well I use these plastic, cheap plastic tables, but I found that you can't put a heavy machine on a cheap plastic table because then it kind of sends the bow in the middle. So I started putting them on these uh, particle board, you know they're all on particle board, and I noticed that the great thing about it is with these mechanical machines you have to oil them a lot, and so the oil drips. Well, when it drips on the particle board, the particle board just kind of soaks it up like a sponge. And it works great. So, they sit on these oily boards, and that doesn't bother me one little bit. So, we've got the computer. It's a very big necessity, having a computer right here. Big spool of elastic. The webcam on top. Let's see, CDs. Audiobooks, another big necessity here in the sewing room. It's almost impossible to sew without a good audiobook playing. Let's see, we've got the bookshelf over here. What do we have here? How to make sewing patterns, complete book of sewing, shirt making, wild fermentation, essence of self realization, oh, polyamory. Oh, good, good little collection of books here flip through the patterns and I find these patterns at thrift shops or you know wherever I don't use patterns all that much oh this one's funny I love these size 42 it's a little bit bigger than I need I'm not sure if that's a chest size or a waist size on that this one's great I love him I love him in his sunglasses anyway it's my pattern collection See underneath here we've got the shoe boxes. Ah, oh, the big elastic stock right here. Got this great Mickey elastic and big rolls of black elastic and all kinds of elastic. You can't have too much elastic. I don't think there's anything special in here. Oh, fold over elastic. It's fun stuff. Big box of zippers. Wow. Pretty much a zipper for every occasion. Put that back in there. What's in this one? Oh, I don't know what that is. 
Let's see. I've got feet and cams and oh stuff that I don't really use all that often, but needs to be out anyway. Some CD spindles. Hmm. See, here's a cabinet that I don't know what to do with. One of the supernovas came in this. It's a nice little cabinet. I don't. It's a little bit too small for me. I can't get my legs underneath there. It's a pretty small opening. Let's see, over here we have. This is cotton I use for the pockets of jeans and the waistbands. There's a pile of denim. Some denim samples on top. Let's see, you can't really see this, but that's a blind. Is that the blind hem? And that's a cover stitch machine there. Some jean rejects. Some knitting machine, sock knitting machine. Hmm. That's a cutting table. The rotary cutter. I like to store my fabric on hangers. It makes it really accessible and easy to see what you've got. It's my duct tape dress form or body double. Comes in handy. The top shelf up there, you've got, you know, what you'd normally find in jars, buttons, and buttons, and buttons, and buttons. Some ribbon, tape, hot glue, electric screwdriver, interfacings. Yep. Lots of fabric. And this is my big ironing table. I don't know what that was before it was my ironing table. But I found it here and I converted it. I love to be able to iron the whole width of a piece of fabric without having to try to get it onto the ironing board. Let's see underneath there we've got my homemade clapper. A couple 2x4s nailed together. Easy as that. I like it because it's extra long too, so you can do... You can't do the whole leg of a pair of pants, but you know, you can do a lot of it. Roll of paper for making patterns. Pressing ham. Static guard. Lint roller. Denim scraps for practicing stitches on. Hmm. Pretty much... Oh, there's an old Kenmore back there. I use that to cannibalize for this Kenmore. Kenmores were used a lot of interchangeable parts, so you could kind of kind of do that. So we've got in here bias tape maker, scissors, hammer for hammering seams, spray starch. That's essential. Aha, uh -huh, glue, craft bond. I just use whatever glue I can find cheap. You don't have to have expensive glue for gluing fabric. It doesn't have to be permanent. So that's, that is my sewing room. Lots of light up here. Makes it really nice. Sometimes there's too much light, I have to actually close the blinds. Which is good. I can't sew in the dark anymore. You see there's even actually a... I use a light over the ironing table now. I find it makes it so much easier not to have to squint while you're ironing. 